Welcome back kids. It's so good to be back in the shop uh, after two weeks off suffering with this lung vi uh, excuse me, lung syphilis. I'm telling you, it was touch and go there for a while. I would have had to gotten better to die. This is the worst. I, mean, I ain't never been that sick and lived over it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, today I'm gonna show you how to assign numbers to all of your tools in your tool database in VCAR Pro and also in the MASO. And it's important that those numbers and tools match up on each list in both places. So, so let's get with it and I'll show you how to do that. All right, we're in VCAR Pro and first thing we need to do is get to our tool database. And there's two ways to go about that. One, you can click on your tool pass tab up here and click tool database. Or over here, you can just click on that button and it'll bring up the tool database. So either way, we're in mine now. Of course, yours is going to look different. <laughs> but these are all of my bits that I have in my arsenal. And you'll notice my bits are numbered. And they have to be. It's uh, If you're going to use them in your Masso, you have to have these bits numbered and that's what I'm going to show you today is how to do that. I'll just uh, click one for example here, the first one here on the list and you'll notice, just forget all this up here, but this is the most important thing. This is where you assign your tool number to your tool. Each tool has to have a unique number. And I believe in the Masso, you're limited to from uh, 1 to 105 or something like that. Some, some weird number. But anyway, you can have a little over 100 different tool numbers. And if you don't have these tool numbers in your V-carve and also the exact same numbers for the bit in your Masso, it's not going to work. Uh, I had a guy recently messaged me or saw it somewhere uh, every time he loaded a different tool it was still saying it was tool number two well that's because the tool wasn't uh, I mean yeah the tools weren't numbered correctly so uh, that's what we're addressing today so let's just I'm going to go through the process I'm just going to make up a tool here we're going to add a new tool so I'll come in from this way this time so we go back in my tool database and I'm just going to add an end mill. But here you can see mine are broke down into several different uh, branches, I guess you'd say. I got my end mills, my V bits, and my specialist bits, which would be like a drag and surfacing bits, ball nose, uh, <coughs> excuse me, drill bits. So, so if you wanted to add one of these, I'll just show you this real quick. My section, I've got it named My Bits. I have all these others up here that I downloaded the database and just imported it into uh, VCAR Pro. But down here, I kind of customized that and added the tools that I actually have in my arsenal uh, that are available for me to use for every project. All right, so let's just say we want to add an end mill. We're going to click your end mills, and this should already be a default branch in your, uh, or section in your VCAR Pro. So I click on that on my end mill. I'm going to add an end mill, so I'll go down here to the plus sign. Click that, <laughs> and by default, for whatever reason, I don't know why, it always comes up with a ball nose at first, but you got to change that right off the bat. So we're just going to say it's an end mill, uh, then... Let's see. Yeah, 5 16th. This is one I was playing with earlier because I don't have a 5 16th bit, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm saying I have an end mill that's 5 16th inch diameter. We're going to give it two flutes, and then we're going to create the settings. And it will automatically populate uh, all of this down here based on, I guess, its best guess, but don't rely on that. 
uh, always use your bit manufacturer's recommended feeds and speeds, or at least start there. And as you uh, use the bit and get more familiar with your machine, you can uh, possibly increase those feeds and speeds. And, and that's what I do. But I always start with, with whatever is suggested from the manufacturer of that particular bit. <laughs> so we're going to just say in this example that this is all correct. But if it wasn't, you know, you could come in here, look up the data on your manufacturer's website, and set all of these things the way they're supposed to be. But here's your tool number. So before we actually add this tool, let's add the tool number. And it just so happens I don't have a tool number one in my database. I've kind of saved that one in case I do get something that needs to go that's even smaller than a 132nd inch. I can't imagine that. But anyway, I left myself one space there, kind of room to grow. But we're going to say, yeah, that's a tool number one. But if we wanted to make it a different number, we could just, you know, we could go in here and type out whatever we wanted to. We could make it tool number 100. But in this case, we're just going to say it's tool number one. Uh, we've double checked all this information, compared that to what's on the manufacturer's website. And we hit apply. And you'll see it's going to add it over here, right there. Now I have tool number one there, 5 16th inch, downtown Jenny. There's no such thing. This is just an example. And that's, it's as simple as that. That's how you assign those numbers. And let's just say if you already have all your bits in here, but you don't have numbers, or if they all have the same number, here's how you change that. Just highlight uh, your bit, and in my case, you don't, that's the second one in the end meal, so I would name it number two. And if it was number two, I would just change it here. Uh, let's just do one here. All right, end meal number six. <clears throat> I could change that to 66 and apply. And from now on, that would be tool number 66. But if, if that was already in my MASO as tool number six, I would have to then go over to the MASO and make that adjustment over there too. But we're not going to. I'm not changing that. There's no reason to. So now uh, I'm going to take you over to the MASO and show you how to add these tool numbers and the tools to your database on your MASO. So let's go over there and do that. One. All right. We're in the MASO. We need to go to F4, Tools and Offsets. This is your tool database. Uh, let's scroll down right quick. Let's just see how many numbers it actually is. Okay, you have up to 104 tools that you can add. And it was something odd like that. But uh, as, you, as I scroll through here on mine, I've got mine all separated out like my V bits. I started those in the 30s. And that way I have plenty of... Uh, room below before I get into the 40s, which are my tapered ball nose. Uh, that way I've got room to grow. I can add V bits on here. I got one, two, three, four, five slots where I could add a V bit in the future and not mess up my list. And same thing up here on my end mills. Um, I've got those grouped together, of course, numbered sequentially. That's a big word. And I'll also point out uh, on mine, I have them also kind of separated out by uh, the size. Like here's my end mills, those small ones, starting out with 132nd, 116th, 116th, 18th, 18th, 18th. That's all of my 18th bits. And then I left some space in here before I started on a different size, which I only have one 316th inch end mill. That's from uh, IDC Woodcraft. And then I allowed another couple of spaces there in case I wanted to add another 3 16th later on. And then I get started on my, uh -oh, on my quarter inch. And then of course, big space before I get to my V bits. So I just uh, leave yourself room to grow between your sections there. Cause really once you do all this, you only really only want to do the whole thing once. Cause it is kind of a pain in the ass, but 
Uh, but once you get it in there, you're good to go. So anyway, let's add that 5 16 inch bit that we made up. So we're going to double click that. Tool name. If it's an end mill, I always started out with uh, EM. End mill. Then I'll put the size in there. 5 16 and since I'm a big time uh, Jenny guy, I'm just gonna call it a DT Gin. Downtown Jenny. Again, there's no such thing as that. We're just making it up here. <laughs> My tool diameter is 5 16th is 0.3125. So Go back, point three one two five. Tool diameter where? I don't have anything in that. Um, I think in woodworking type scenarios, I, I can't imagine that you would uh, have to worry about the, your bit wearing down to where it's no longer exactly 5 16th. I just don't see that happening. That, I think that's more for uh, machining metal and things like that. If you have metal bits, then yes. If your for, bits are for cutting metal, you may need to do that, but I'm not worried about it. My Z offset stays at zero. And so now all I gotta do is hit save, and you see our new end mill is in there. Simple as that. And as long as your tool number's here, for each bit matches the tool numbers in your VCAR Pro database, you're good to go. All right, that's it for this video. Apologize for my voice, but I'm still trying to get over this lung syphilis and this bad stuff. Let me tell you, it's I've had a I've had the Rona twice, and this is ten times worse than Rona was. So. Anyway, but at least I'm back out in the shop. I feel like getting out of the recliner, and, and I tell you, I'm so glad to be back out here and uh, making videos again. I have certainly missed this. Uh, thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, be sure and like, subscribe, share, all those good things. It really helps my channel, and the channel's really just continuing to grow. Even with me taking two weeks off, I'm still gaining subscribers, so... I appreciate y'all for that. Uh, anything you can do to help me out, I appreciate it. So that's it for this one. Uh, I gotta say real quick, how about those Chiefs? <laughs> this is my first video that I've actually uh, made since the Super Bowl victory. So yeah, pretty happy about that. But anyway, y'all have a good one and I'll see you on the next video.